Hey guys, so some people who have watched my channel before, if you can even call it a channel, will have seen that I, I took on a, a Raspberry Pi project for my aquarium quite some time ago and the concept behind that was to try and automate some tasks using a Raspberry Pi. Um, it didn't work quite as I expected, mainly because it just wasn't reliable enough. Um, I think that might have been down to some of the components, some of my coding, some bits and pieces. I didn't trust it. So I'm now upgrading my aquarium and I want to take on a new project doing around the same thing but I want to put a bit more thought into it, take some of what I learned last time and make something that can do a whole lot more, a lot more reliably um, and a lot more safely. So I've been shopping for components, I have a nice bag of stuff that I will be turning into um, what I'm going to call an, like an aquarium API box. The concept behind this box versus the other one is um, it won't be running the web front end itself, it's just going to be uh, a number of endpoints um, that will run through Python that we can call to pr pr sort of get back any data from the aquarium if we need to, or back from the Raspberry Pi sensors, or make it do things such as a water change, um, turn on lights, turn off lights. Um, one of the things that I wanted this to do was to control LED lights. Now. My previous aquarium was using T5 HOs, so they were just your simple on off. Now I've managed to get a fairly good deal on a number of these. These are TMC Aquaways, they're normally used for reef aquariums, but I've got a number that are in um, various daylight colours, perfect for a freshwater aquarium. Um, and they are just essentially, you know, nicely well made waterproof LED bars. Um, and I've got seven of these. And I want to be able to dim and turn them off, turn them on, and simulate things such as thunderstorms. Now, I did buy this as well, mainly because I wanted to see how it worked. So this, this is the, the Aquaray controller that comes with the lights, um, and it controls eight inputs. It works perfectly fine. It does everything I need. Um, but I would like it to work through the Raspberry Pi. So what I essentially want to do is, is make sure that my system can do this, do what this does. Now this uses um, PWM to do the dimming of the lights and it has two channels. So I think we can probably do better than that. We can probably go for more than two channels. So to start off with, um, looking at the best way of doing this using a Pi, we needed um, some sort of signal amplifier, something that can take the PWM signal from the Raspberry Pi um, and boost it. Now, the Raspberry Pi has um, one hardware PWM channel. Um, it does have a number of uh, software options, something which I'll, I'll try before I go to the route of buying a separate breakout board with extra hardware PWM. But for now, we're gonna see if this will work. So this is a, um, a 24 volt um, or 12 volt signal amplifier for LEDs. Now it, it works on RGB at the moment, um, controlling four distinct channels. I'm gonna take this uh, and use the separate RGB channels to control various different channels. So it's a very, very simple pros uh, concept. You have your, you signal inside and you signal outside and you just need to provide it with a, a DC 24 or 12 volt power in depending on how many you're powering. Now this, um, this Acroway controller is 24 volt meaning that the power supply it comes with takes 24 volt. So I'm going to try and reuse that essentially. You can see that it has a almost like a PCIe connector. It's actually a little odd, they've actually used the inverted. I gather they, they don't want people accidentally plugging the wrong things into these, so it uses the the opposite pins from what you'd expect in one of these. Um, the same with with these light connectors actually. The, the, the opposite that you'd expect, you'd expect the, the uh, female to be on this side and the male to be on the other, but it's the opposite way around on this. So it's something we can get around, but just something to bear in mind. So, what have I been buying? Let's find out. So the first thing we're going to need for the project is a Raspberry Pi. I've gone with a Raspberry Pi W, um, the wireless and Bluetooth version, on the basis that they are just a lot smaller. So I got this just used, someone else had tried a project, come with an 8 gig stick, um, it's exactly what I need. 
Um, no pre-soldered pins, so I can solder straight onto the board. That will do me fine. I've got some, some various connectors. So I've got some DC female connectors, which I'll explain what I'm going to use them for. Just some screws, some various USB connectors. We've got some, some glands for some cables. We've got all, but I'm going to use as our main power connector. Now that is going to, I want one input that will power everything. That includes the lights, that includes the Raspberry Pi, um, the amplifier, everything, all in one, one power cable. So that is for the outside. That will take a normal power plug. And this will convert it down to use the power supply that comes with the Acroids. So as we can see, this is the, the Acroid power supply. That's going to be inside my box, or my project box, but I'm going to wire that to there. So we're almost pushing the power out, but we can also take it and use it elsewhere. Um, I've got some pins. These are actually the wrong ones. I'm going to have to try and salvage from one of my computers somewhere the opposite to these, because although they are the right ones if you're wiring a PCIe plug for this, um, for this power supply, they're actually the wrong wrong way round. So you can see that if it will focus, they're actually the same even though they're meant to be on opposite plugs. So we have a small little power um, converter, just takes AC and turns it into 5 volt 2 amp. So we can power use this to power the Raspberry Pi using a, a standard AC signal. I could have used some sort of USB converter, but I thought this would be a bit more solid and, and probably a bit more reliable for that. This is going to need wiring, but I'm going to use this for checking and ticking um, the amount of water change. So it's just a, a basic flow meter. got a number of three mil jacks here, uh, three and a half mil jacks. The reason being is that any connectors that connect in, so this goes for the temperature gauge, uh, temperature sensor, anything along them lines will connect to this rather than being wired directly into the board like my previous model was. Got some various cable ties. This is just to convert from um, HDMI mini to HDMI. Um, I'll explain the, um, the plan for that. Now because it's going to have a lot of electronics, I think this is going to get warm, so I'm going to put a fan in this just to extract some of it, some of the heat out of my project box. This is going to be powered by the Pi, so it should come on when the Pi comes on. And I've ordered some pre-tinned pre leads um, just to make the build easier if I'm jumping across various things. This can be somewhat easier. They're actually a bit shorter than I imagined they were going to be, but I, th I think they'll do for what I want to use them for. Got some more glands, so these will be any for external because they're black and they match the project box. We have a quick push fit um, RO style connector um, solenoid valve. So this I, I tried to match up with so it could be powered by the same power supply as um, the lights are, so it's 24 volt. Um, pretty heavy duty one from what I could see from the review, so that might hopefully do the job. The new temperature sensor, so I think this is going to need extending a little bit, but this is going to go to a 3mm jack rather than um, just being widened directly, but that's that's our temperature sensor. And our 3mm jack connectors that will go on to the various peripherals we want to connect into this. We've just got some spade connectors to connect to the, uh, to the solenoid valve. We have a relay, so I've got one relay here, I've actually got another one somewhere around the house I'm going to dig out, but this will be for um, switching on the solenoid valve using the Raspberry Pi, but there's also another plan, which I'll go through at the end, about using a second one for something interesting. Just a spare. So here we have some resistors, and this is to bring down the ampage from the light power supply down to something that that solenoid valve can use. I just needed one of them, but typically they don't sell them in one, so I've got spares. Now this is going to be used, this is basically a rewirable USB socket. Um, and I will 
wire one of these into that power supply and then into this because you, you can't find rewirable mini ones <laughs> they're just they're just too small to be wiring um, but you can buy these ones so we, I'm gonna use this to power the Raspberry Pi from that power supply and the second one will be used to push the, the spare USB socket from the Raspberry Pi out to a, um, an, a an outside mounted USB socket on the actual project box meaning if I need to plug anything into it externally at a later date I don't have to take the thing apart, I just plug it into that socket. Easy peasy. So this is my uh, replacement plug. So this is going to go onto the power supply and allow me to then convert that over to whatever I want to use it. As I said, I've took the pins out because they were wrong. I'm going to have to find some pins that are the opposite to what they should be in this one and hope that I can make it work. And we've just got some various heat shrink just to neaten them things up as we go along we have <coughs> some some fairly decent two core wire so this will be for um, any internal wiring on the lights it's designed to hold a bit more ampage than um, than your, your sort of raspberry pi rather thin cable and then I've got this this is a, a little tiny just a little tiny DC pump um, that will take the power supply coming out of the Raspberry Pi one, if I've worked out my my mounts right, yeah. Um, and I can put that for a relay using the Pi. And using these jacks, have this connect ax externally, so they can just go straight in. Now, plan with this is I want to be able to simulate a thunderstorm and that includes not just sound, not just flashing and lights, but it also means I'd like rain. So this is going to go to a very, very small spray bar that will just spray a small amount of water over the top whenever the pie says it should. Should hopefully simulate a rainstorm. So we'll, we'll give that a try. That's a bit of a wild card. I'm not quite sure if that's going to work, but we'll, um, we'll give it a go. It's, it's, it's a pump I'd line around anyway, so it's not like I'm at a loss with that. Obviously got our signal lamp a fly up there and out power supply. I've invested in a, a nice glue gun because I'm sure this is going to end up with me having to glue various things down into the box. So that's all ready to go. There's a few other things that I'm just waiting for. So um, I'm waiting for some external connectors to get the female plug on the lights down to um, just a, a single wire. I don't want to be cutting any wires. I want everything to be able to be removed and be used as it should be. Um, so once they arrive I can hopefully hook into the female plug on the uh, Acroray lights and use use that to hook into the um, PW, PWM and uh, signal amplifier. Probably going to have to cut some of these leads. You can see that the, the, it was a waterproof one. I didn't technically need a waterproof one, but that they were cheaper in this, this way. Um, so I might end up finding I have to cut the cables here and put new connectors on because, believe it or not, these are hard to find. <laughs> I had a good old search trying to find somewhere where I could just pick up the male or female part. So they should be opposites like that. I need kind of another two, a bit like this one. That they, they nicely give you this one in the box, but not anymore, which was a bit of a pain. And that's only a two pin. So I can use that to power it, but I'm going to need more. So I might have to, I might even open this up I have had a look and it is all nicely soldered and easy accessible I could just open these up put some new cable in there so I'm not damaging these but I, to, to be fair I don't think I'm going to use them so it's not such a big deal for the price this this unit cost it's not really a not really a huge deal um, and then we've got we've got the, the project box it's all going to go into so I wanted quite a beefy box I wanted there to be a nice amount of airflow it's going to be hidden behind a wall so for it to be showing is not really a, a big deal and it was it was hard finding a project box big enough but yeah, I think it's come, it, it's come out pretty nice it will look pretty nice when it's done so I've, I've, I've got a, a nice little um, on off switch coming and there'll just be there won't be a lot on this unit there'll just be the various connectors, a little on-off switch. Um, I'm not going to do anything fancy like have a screen to allow us to set the Wi-Fi password and stuff. I'll just I'll code that into the 
uh, the bits and pieces. If, if I'm feeling fancy, I might make it so that as a standard um, image, it, it just uh, creates a hotspot that you join and then set the Wi-Fi. Keep it really simple. Um, but it will just be powered by a single plug on the side. Switch it on. Plug on the side. Switch on, and should be good to go. There'll be a bit of coding involved in trying to get the API works, but my plan then. Because I don't want to be connecting a, a, a screen to this in any way. Plus, I don't want it to be anywhere near the aquarium. I want it to be like a, a, a fair distance away. Uh, obviously, some things need to be close to it, but it not to be on display. So, um, I'm going to build the box around running an API that um, can be called by a, a website. Um, I've got a, a rather beefy server running here. So I might use that to build a web front end that calls the box and runs the various functions. And that means that not only can I use it to through the website, but I can also use it um, for, for example, a Google Home Mini or something that we could we can tap into the API and make it do things. I've got a, 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 an Asus tablet lying around, so I'm going to um, I'm going to wire that in so it's plugged in continuously. Um, I can do some coding on the um, on like a Linux distro on on the tablet to make it come on as you approach it, um, and create a little dashboard on that that just communicates with the API. So I'm hoping that will be a bit more reliable than the way last time it was working. I, I can be a bit more, I can get a bit more feedback, I guess, from from the processes. Um, keep the actual Pi software relatively simple. Um, and then that means that if anyone wants to use it, you're not necessarily having to use the web front end. It could be attached to anything. Um, so that's the plan. It's going to take a little while to put together. Um, still got a few little things to work out, but I'll, I'll do them as I'm going through it. Um, as I said, I'm waiting for a couple of bits now. Once I've got that, um, I can start running some breadboard testing to make sure that the my ideas around PWM are, are working. I'm by no means an expert when it comes to electronics. The last time I studied electronics was at school. So uh, I'm piecing together what I know, what I've learned, what I can find online, and what I know as a guy who works in IT. So um, keep keep I'll, I'll keep the channel posted once I start building and going through, and it hopefully be something interesting. All right, bye for now.